Let's let's get started with our, our final talk of the morning. Um, we have Suyan Ma from Sorbonne, uh, who will tell us about sharp decay for Tchaikovsky master equation. Suyan. Okay, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for the organizer's invitation. I'm very glad to be here, I mean, also online, uh, to present my work with um, uh, Lin Zhang. Actually, uh, Serge already gave a very uh, preliminary introduction about uh, Tokorsky master equation. So this is uh, some e fundamental uh, equation they, uh, they use. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is about the sharp decay for this Tokorsky master equation in curved space-time. Um, yeah, I will, I will first introduce this uh, TME, which is for Tokorsky master equation in the curved space-time and then give you some motivation uh, why we study this sharp decay. And this sharp decay in the physics literature is called the Price's Law. And in the third part, uh, then I would, I would study the very simple model, uh, the, the scalar wave equation on Swatchard and derive the Price's Law or the sharp decay. And in the first part, I would then uh, extend it to the Tukowski master equation in the curved space times. And in the end, um, if time permits, I will show a little bit of um, uh, applications. Okay, let's start. Um, so there are a few uh, explicit equation solutions to the vacuum Einstein equation. And the simplest one is the Minkowski spacetime, the most trivial one. And the second one by uh, Swatchard, uh, this is the metric and mu here, it's one minus two M over R the zero point corresponds to the location of event horizon and it contains a black hole. And the very highly non-trivial one is by Kerr. So uh, this is a family of axis symmetric rotating space time. Uh, here, this is the expression of the metric. And we consider here only the subtrim family of Kerr space times. That means the absolute value of A is strictly less than M. And in the, in the metric form, uh, we have this delta function and sigma delta function, the functions of R and R theta. So this actually, the zero point or the zero points of this um, delta function correspond to the locations of Hoche horizon and event horizon. And sigma is just the determinant of uh, the, sorry, the, the square root of the determinant in this Boyan linguist coordinates. And to properly uh, introduce the Tchaikovsky master equation, we have to uh, first to discuss about uh, the spin S components. This is actually uh, defined by this uh, Newman Penrose formalism. So this is to say that at every point of the space time, we choose a complex null frame or null tetrad, L, N, M, M bar. So in principle, L will be the outgoing null direction and will be the ingoing null direction. M and M bar, you can think of like it's a complex null frame uh, around sphere, roughly. So it satisfies this GLN equal to minus one and uh, GMM bar equal to one. Uh, by the way, M bar is usually taken to be the complex conjugate of M and the other, the remaining products are zero. And then what we do is to project the field onto this uh, tetrad and then get the corresponding components. Or in particular, we get the spin S components. The spin zero component is just a scalar field solving the scalar wave equation. Uh, for spin uh, plus minus one, this is to project the Maxwell field uh, or the Maxwell uh, tensor F onto the tetrad and then get this uh, spin plus minus one components. And similarly, you define this spin plus minus two components. Uh, maybe I shall rem remind you that this corresponds to alpha or alpha bar in the language of uh, Christola and Kleinman in the proof of uh, Minkowski stability. So, uh, yeah. So uh, we have to choose, uh, we have to make a choice of this tetrad. We take this so-called hard cooking tetrad the, uh, this tetrad has a few uh, interesting properties. So first, this ln directions, they are aligned with the principal null direction of the curved geometry. And second, this n is actually geodetic, which means uh, lambda n, n equal to zero. And then you complement this uh, tetrad by m, m bar, okay. 
So uh, Tokoski in 1972, he, he found this uh, uh, master, master equation for the spin S components. So if we denote this S frac to be the absolute value of S and let it range between uh, zero, one, one half, one and two, then the, the new spin S components, this psi S component, they are just the rescalings of this original uh, uh, spin S components, but these rescalings are R and theta dependent, okay. This uh, new spin S components, psi S, they actually solve a decoupled separable spin weighted wave equation in the following form. So uh, in the first line, actually, this is, uh, this is uh, I call it sigma box GS acting on psi S. This is like a spin weighted version of the scalar wave equation Okay, and the second line, I have isolated all these first order derivative terms, which are not present in the scalar wave case because they're with the coefficient s, which is the spin weight, and these coefficients are real. Okay, and uh, psi s, these components, they actually govern the dynamics of the scalar field, Dirac field, Maxwell field, and linearized gravity. So these fields actually correspond to different uh, values of S here, okay. And so um, there are like uh, mainly two uh, uh, motivations to study this uh, uh, price law or sharp decay, uh, in particular, or the, uh, in particular about these tails. Tails are like asymptotic decay in finite radius region First, uh, uh, this current stability conjecture, I mean, uh, Serge already gave a very interesting talk about this, so I will not talk about it anymore. And, but I want to emphasize that to, to address this uh, current stability conjecture as in Serge's talk, actually, it's important to derive sufficiently good decay for this linearized gravity, such that you can use this good decay to control these nonlinear terms in the nonlinear evolution. And the second motivation arises from this uh, strong cosmic censorship hypothesis. Uh, this is proposed by uh, Penrose in 1969. And I stated here for Kerr, but roughly um, uh, in one sentence to explain, uh, this is to say that the, the Kerr Horsch horizon is actually um, in, in extendable uh, su subtract, subject to any kind, uh, subject to generic small perturbations of the current initial data. So this is in particular says that the current Cauchy horizon is actually instable. And to show this instability on the Cauchy horizon, a key point is to show that you, you, you first get lower bound of decay for, the, for perturbations, say for on event horizon or slightly inside the event horizon. And then you propagate this uh, towards this Hodge horizon, eventually get lower bounds of decay on Hodge horizon and translate it to some kind of singularity at Hodge horizon. So uh, then these two motivations already, um, you know, uh, motivate us to obtain the precise asymptotics or precise decay rates for this uh, uh, linearized gravity or Tokoski master equation in curved space times. Uh, but one may first ask why we have tails, right? Because this is not, uh, if this is not the case in the Minkowski case. So in Minkowski, if you're given a smooth compact supported initial data, and then due to the strong quickest principle, there's no tails. However, this is not true anymore in Swatcher case. It's because that the strong quickest principle actually fails in Swatcher case. So if we take, for instance, the scalar wave equation on Swatcher as a, an example, uh, the equation takes this form for the radiation field, big psi, and yv are just the ingoing and outgoing now directions. And you see that it's quite similar to the wave equation for radiation field on Minkowski, but there's an additional term. This is, can be viewed as a potential term. And this potential is dependent on the mass of the black hole. 
And so this potential then actually causes this uh, bike scattering. So if you look at this picture, this uh, the radiation will go to the non-infinity, but because of this potential or this effective curvature potential, some radiation will be reflected back into the interior region. And hence you will eventually have tears and uh, naively thinking, so the decay rates and the coefficient in front of this decay, they should be dependent on the potential. Okay. And- Wait, uh, I'm a little bit confused, excuse me. I'm a little bit confused. So, so th this would be a problem even without the potential, right? That you don't have strong Huygens principle. Well, uh, anyway. can you say it again? The backscattering uh, would yep. appear in anyway even without the potential the uh, potential term no am i wrong well yeah uh let me think about it. uh uh yeah in, indeed so it depends if you are thinking about the l equal to zero mode spheric symmetric mode then no because you are only propagating along these now directions yes yeah mm -hmm. So you are talking about just about L equal one more. Okay, so you are looking at different modes. Well, I would talk about all modes and yeah, eventually. Okay, uh, price actually started from uh, this kind of wave equation, but it's the reg will equation. This already um, uh, is discussed in Serge's talk. And he actually derived uh, the, you know, the, the sharp decay for this spin S components in finite radius region only. But I stayed here for, 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 uh, for two regions, uh, I mean, also towards now infinity. Um, so they start, this, this evolution actually started from um, smooth compact supported initial data and it's on swatched or on rise on uh, Here UV, uh, like the retarded time and forward time so you look at this uh, table and then you find that towards now infinity, the decay is purely in terms of R and U, which are like bounded stacks coordinates. And in final radius region, then we use more like uh, the ingoing entity than Finkelstein V, which is regular coordinate. And uh, let me give a few remarks about this uh, table so, so that you can understand it better. So first, the decay rate actually grow linearly in this S frac and this mode parameter L, okay? And third, a second, if you look at uh, the asymptotics towards now infinity, the R decay is actually different for different spin S components. So it depends on the spin weight, but however, it does not depend on this L mode, the L mode, Actually, the L dependence occurs in this U decay. Okay, so this R decay actually is already uh, characterized by this so-called peeling property. And then, if you go go to this finite radius region, the decay you look at, you know, for higher modes, then this is actually different from the decay total power of decay towards now infinity because you gain extra L minus S frac power in the total decay rate in the finite radius region compared to the decay towards now infinity. So um, anyway, this is what Price predicted in, in his uh, papers. And there are also uh, afterwards numeric and uh, heuristic extensions uh, to curve space time. In, in particular in physics literature, uh, so let me give you an overview of the pay, of the results in mass literature. So I will not explain much about this, but uh, maybe I will emphasize that the global price law for the for the scalar field and its big or equal to L modes are proven in Swatchard, Rice, Nostrum, and Kerr. Okay, in particular, uh, I should uh, uh, highlight these two results. Hints and Angelopoulos Arataki Skagic. Okay. However, gen generally this is unsolved for non-zero S case. In, there are some results by Methoff, Tataru, Tuhana Alu, and Dolling Shalak Sofa, but they all proved 
uh, less tau inverse decay compared to this uh, price law. And it's, it's sharper up bound, not lower bound, of course. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me, uh, let me then uh, go to the third part about the simple model of this uh, scalar wave equation on Swatchard. So I first need a uh, foliation. Uh, the foliation is defined by this time function tau, and it has such uh, three properties. First, constant tau have surfaces are space-like globally in the exterior region. So it, it is transverse to this event horizon. And second, in, in the neighborhood of the trapping, I, I wish this tau to be exactly the boiling Lindquist T. And third, in the outgoing direction towards uh, uh, now infinity, I hope this sigma tau are asymptotic now, okay? That means tau is like U for R large. And I call this tau rho equal to R theta phi tilde. Phi tilde is actually the ingoing antitime fingers than phi as the hyperboloid coordinates. And then we have this kind of foliation. Uh, these are sigma constant tau have surfaces and the region bounded by sigma tau one and sigma tau two, it's called D tau one tau two. And then you can also define this truncated, uh, truncated parts of the horizon and uh, now infinity between tau one and tau two. All these estimates are done in this, uh, in this, hype, in this foliation. Yeah, um, and this is the scalar wave equation in terms of the radiation field on Swatchard. And usually uh, the starting point is to first to prove the a very basic energy and the morale estimate. I call it a uh, bin estimate. And it's usually to use some multipliers. And this is fairly standard by many, many works uh, uh, here. So in the footnote, uh, eventually what you can get is an energy estimate, which roughly says that the late time energy is bounded by the initial energy. And the Morawitz estimate, which says a space-time integral of some local energy density is actually controlled by the initial energy. Okay. And then we have to exploit some structure near infinity. And we use the RP estimates of the Differmus Ronansky developed uh, since uh, 2010. And it's to use different multipliers, but with uh, R weights. And R power here is dependent on the parameter P and that's why it's called RP estimate. And then once you multiply this wave equation by this, uh, by this uh, multiplier, then you get such an expression, which is like uh, the first line is like divergence, uh, divergence form. And the second line is like the space time bucked uh, eventually. And you integrate in the space-time region, and eventually, what you get is uh, such a such a weighted energy and morale estimate. Okay, uh, it's similar to the or, or previous uh, bin estimate, energy and morale estimate, but it's weighted in the sense that now it's a weighted p weighted energy, latent energy is bounded by p weighted initial energy. And additionally, you have this P minus one weighted energy, and then you integrate in space time. This is like a Morawitz estimate bounded by initial energy. Okay. And this allows you to use uh, the mean value principle to get eventually tau to the minus two decay for P equal to zero weighted energy in terms of P equal to two weighted energy, okay. So this K actually here characterize the regularity in terms of this commutator set, which is uh, fairly standard in the RP estimates. Uh, yeah, so let me then uh, give you uh, an overview of the uh, estimates for an L mode because um, because, uh, because of spheric, sym spheric symmetry actually the L mode can be decoupled from any other modes. So it satisfies a decoupled wave equation. And however, if you recall the price law, the decay rates actually grows, grows ne nearly in, in L. So that means we have to show faster decay for higher L modes. 
right? And how to do that? Um, we, we noticed that there is actually a spectrum gap. This is far away from this zero frequency. And we use this spectrum gap by applying this curve V hat at operator. This is mu inverse R square V acting on this radiation field. And then we get this psi i. Psi i means uh, you apply i times this curve v hat on this psi, and then you derive its equation. Its governing equation is in this, uh, uh, in this form. And you notice that actually the left-hand side is quite similar to the wave, uh, to, the, to, to, this, to the original wave equation of this L mode. Uh, except, okay, you have now this uh, extra first order derivative term, but actually this is good. This is, has a very good sign in the RP estimates. And you introduce extra O of R inverse uh, terms, but this can be viewed as low order, and this is easily to be controlled. Uh, the most important point here is actually, we reduce this spectrum, this L to L times L plus one to L minus I, times L plus I plus one. So this is like distribute I into these two different um, uh, uh, factors. <laughs> and on the right hand side, we additionally have some terms which relate back to the lower I, which is psi I minus one. And this is O of one coefficient, okay. And uh, if you apply this RP estimates or RP hierarchy, Again, you notice that as long as this i strictly, I mean, as long as i less than l, this is bigger than zero, big or equal to zero, and then you can still achieve RP estimates and get RP estimate for psi i, for each psi i, with p equal to uh, p between zero and two. And hence you get uh, uh, tau to the minus two decay for p equal to zero energy, in terms of P equal to two weighted energy for each psi i. And uh, the next step is to relate this uh, energy of different psi i's. And you notice that by definition, actually, this P equal to zero energy of psi y actually bounds P equal to two energy of psi i minus one. So you can relate this, um, uh, th this uh, L plus one energy decay estimates by this, uh, by this fact. And eventually you achieve that P equal to zero weighted energy of psi zero or psi itself is actually, uh, has actually a uh, tau to the minus two, minus two L decay in terms of P equal to two weighted energy of psi L, okay? So by doing so, then you actually achieve better decay a better energy decay for L modes. All right. Uh, however, this is actually not sufficient to achieve uh, very fast decay for the, uh, for the L modes. And we have to go further. And the main obstruction is actually coming from this term. And roughly, so if we have this coefficient to be O of R inverse, we can go one step further to actually go to P less, strictly less than five. And uh, it's interesting that uh, there's actually a unique combination. We define this Psi to the L. This is actually defined by Psi L and all this Psi J with J strictly less than L. And these constants are, uh, are unique. And once, and for this uh, new scalar Psi to the L, it satisfies a different wave equation, okay? So this st steer is good. This is good sign in the, in the RP estimate. However, the right hand side now, they only contain O of R inverse terms, but at the price that um, they depend on all these psi J with, for, for J ranging from zero to L, okay? And hence, uh, uh, once this is O of R inverse, you can actually get extended RP estimates with P strictly less than five for this psi tiered L, not psi L anymore for this new scalar. And thereby you eventually 
get here is like the minus five plus epsilon minus L or minus two L energy decay in terms of the P equal to five minus epsilon weighted energy of this psi tiered L, okay? And using some standard Sobolev embedding, you eventually get uh, for little psi itself, you get V inverse tau to the minus two minus L plus epsilon over two, okay? So it's, it's close to the uh, price law. Um, and this point-wise decay are actually invariant under these uh, operations. So to, to conclude, actually we achieved almost a sharp decay in the region rho bigger or equal to tau. This is uh, because in, towards now infinity, the total power of decay, if you recall, it's like, uh, sorry. It's like minus three minus L for the scalar field. And we only get like a loss of tau to the man, tau to the epsilon over two. However, we should recall that in the final radius region, we have to gain extra tau to the minus L decay. Yeah, so we, we're in, in absence of this tau to the minus L decay in the final radius region. And how to do that? Um, we have to define a scalar. This is a, a, a new scalar again. And this phi L, this phi L, this is very special. It's defined by this H L R to the L inverse times psi. And by doing so, the wave equation, then you rewrite it in terms of the hyperbo hyperboloid coordinates, which, which are regular, okay, in the future development. And you can put it into this, um, uh, this uh, divergence form. And this H on the right hand side, they are like uh, expressions in terms of at most the first order derivative of phi L. And in particular here, we have this partial tau derivative on the right hand side. And this H L R to the L actually uh, to the leading term, it's R to the L and it's a station solution to the equation of the L mode. Okay, it's a very special, uh, it, it's a very special function. It's actually a station solution. And um, you can, you can, since partial tau derivative, every time you apply partial tau der derivative, you gain extra tau inverse decay, because we said here, this decay are in, invariant under this tau partial tau, okay. And hence the right hand side actually has extra tau inverse decay, and you can hope to achieve extra tau inverse decay here for this derivative and the phi L itself. And this is uh, true. And you can actually achieve a hierarchy of estimates in the region where tau rho is uh, less than tau, tau. And you can eventually show that this phi L has extra tau to the minus L decay. You gain extra tau to the minus L decay, but in terms of phi L, not for psi, itself and, and, and you translate it to the uh, Psi, then you get this um, almost sharp decay for Psi in this region, rho less than tau, you get extra R to the L tau to the minus L. Of course, this is, this tau to the minus L decay is not, um, is <coughs> not uh, what you can achieve uh, without a price, it's actually, with the price that you get extra R to the L grows. But in final radius region, this is just a bounded. And this is then uh, gives you almost price law also in the final radius region. And they actually also hold for big or equal to L modes. Uh, yeah, let me then um, show you how to derive the sharp decay, the precise asymptotics uh, for these modes. I will simply take L equal to zero mode as an example. This relies on conservation law and it's again uh, very important. Uh, I mean, it's again by this, uh, this wave equation, which is like in the divergence form because uh, then you actually get a conservation law after an integration in the space time. And by integrating in the space time region, you get like, uh, you get, Eventually, the actually you integrate uh, between tau naught and the tau, and you let tau goes to infinity, 
and you get like four boundary turns. The boundary turn of each psi at sigma tau, it's actually asymptotic zero as tau goes to uh, infinity. And you're left with uh, a boundary, uh, an integral of h on the initial hypersurface. And for this part, for the left-hand side, you get two boundary turns, one on event horizon and one on non-infinity. Well, on the event horizon, because of the degeneracy of this delta function, which equals to zero on event horizon, then you get no boundary turn at event horizon. And you're left with uh, an integral of the radiation field along now infinity. Okay, then you get such a global conservation law, which actually computes the integral of radiation field along the now infinity in terms of initial data. Okay. So this is quite important in deriving this uh, precise asymptotics. So um, the wave equation, again, for L equal to zero mode, it's like this form. And we simply multiply it by V cube and uh, then integrate along this Y direction. So it's like we integrate along this, uh, this line and we get uh, it's equal to an integral of this line for this, uh, for this function times uh, psi. And then what you get, what you can do is to push this integral towards now infinity. We push it to infinity and we introduce some low order terms, which uh, eventually turn out to be like, um, has some tau to the minus epsilon decay. Okay. And when you, once you push to the uh, infinity, you find that actually V equal to two R. So this is then actually equal to like 8m times psi. Okay, so then you get like an integral of uh, radiation field along this red line, okay. And eventually you, in, you, 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 uh, you translate it to the, uh, to the, um, to the now infinity integral of the radiation field plus low order term because uh, this part, the integral actually decays. So by doing so, then what you get is uh, the asymptotics for V psi at, every, at, at, at a point UV can be calculated in terms of the, this, uh, this initial data or the initial data asymptotics of this R cube V psi and an integral of the radiation field along now infinity, which can be again calculated by this uh, a global conservation law. So it's again, in terms of the initial data uh, integral of this H psi. <clears throat> and eventually you, you, you can integrate along V direction and get asymptotics for psi itself. So this is like uh, the final statement for scalar wave equation on Swatchwood. We get um, this kind of precise asymptotics for scalar wave on Swatchwood. This is a global asymptotics and it's in terms of purely in terms of initial data. And the right hand side has uh, simply extra decay uh, compared to this decay rate here. And if supported on big O equal to L modes, then we have extra decay. This CL is just a, a, a constant dependent on the L mode. And HL, RL is uh, again, the station solution to the equation of the L mode. And you have extra tau to the minus L, V to the minus L decay. All right. So this is what uh, you can get for the scalar wave case on Swatchard. and. Let me now turn to the Tchaikovsky equation. So the Tchaikovsky equation, we call, uh, this is the spin weighted wave operator. And I just write here the partial T derivative because uh, this is the leading term in some sense. And for S non-zero, you have damping or anti-damping in different radius regions in the exterior, in the black hole exterior region. And in particular, there's no reaction. So it's somehow difficult to use the energy method. And uh, let me tell you how to treat this Tchaikovsky mass equation uh, for S equal to minus two, for instance, the, the, the other cases can be treated as sim similarly. We define this psi minus S frac I, this I means you apply I times this operator 
on this psi minus s, okay, with i between zero and two, up to two. And you get a system of wave equations. And uh, this wave equation, you can notice that the last wave equation, this nine C, here the coefficient are dependent on A. And if A equal to zero, go back to the Swatcher case, then it's a decoupled equation. Okay, it's simply like, uh, like a scalar wave equation. And this is an analog of the reg wheel equation already appeared in uh, Serge's talk. And this application of this uh, operator is related to Chandrasekhar's transformation. And it's first by uh, Deferman's Horsky and Ronensky in, in, in their paper about linear stability of Swatchard. And it's non-static curve. So if A is non-zero, so we do not have decoupled uh, reg wheel equation anymore. However, actually we can get a weakly coupled wave system if A is sufficiently small, okay? So then this wave equation is actually weakly coupled from the rest. And um, in view of this uh, observation, eventually we can get this uh, BN estimates for the coupled wave system for sufficient small A over N. And we get an analog as the BN estimate as the as in the scalar wave case, the energy estimate and the Morawitz estimate. But we, it's the only difference is that we have to sum over i from zero to s frac. Okay. And this is also proved by uh, the, uh, the firm is Hosker Ronansky, and it's actually already very is very important in in the curl nonlinear stability proof. Okay, so uh, let me uh, take a few minutes to talk about the ingredients uh, in the proof of the sharp decay for the Kolsky mass equation in Kerr. So I will not go to the details. So first, this being estimates, and this is uh, always the starting point. Uh, this is actually assumed for general A strictly less than M, but also it's uh, actually proven for for, for, for sufficient small A over M, but for general A over M, it's actually assumed. And we have to uh, do some mode decomposition as well. And we use the spin weighted spheric harmonic decomp decomposition. However, it's in the curl case, then we have mode coupling because of this operator in the Tchaikovsky uh, master equation. So already in the scalar wave case, here we have this this term, so uh, it's already in the scalar wave case, but in the in the non-zero S case, we have additional coupling, and we have to trade these mode couplings in throughout the paper, and we have to also define, you know, because these are supported on higher modes, and we have to also define larger wave systems. I mean, we have to define this uh, psi i's. And also uh, this L modes of this psi i's, and eventually to remove this O of one coefficient to to get extended R p for p strictly less than five. This is called psi two the minus s frac L and and so on. And this is this is actually based on some uh, approaches in by Antilopoulos, Arutakis, Gadrick, and uh, my earlier work with Anderson, Bechter, and the Blue. And uh, finally, actually, the global conservation laws for, for the now infinity, in, now infinity integral of the radiation field, these are quite in, important. Now we, we do not only have one global conservation law, we have a few of them depending on the spin weight and the, the L, L parameter. But anyway, these are, uh, important to characterize the precise asymptotics uh, globally. And uh, let me just remark that um, in, in our proof, actually, the Tukoski star basic identities, the, the usage of these identities simplifies the analysis quite a lot. And these identities are the differential relations between this spin S components Um, yeah, so let me 
give you the final result about the, the Gorski must equation. First, on Swatchard, let's so for this spin S components, we have this global global asymptotics for this R to the minus two S frac psi plus uh, uh, S frac and this psi minus S frac. And we notice that uh, actually this decay rates, they're quite similar. You just interchange this tau and V for different S, okay? However, for this spin S component, spin plus S component, there's an additional mu to the S frac coefficient in front. That means actually, if you go to event horizon, you actually help to get better decay. And it's indeed the case that uh, uh, if S is non-zero, we have extra tau inverse decay for this spin plus S uh, frag component on the event horizon. This is already um, heuristic argued by Barrick Ori in 1999. And this Q unit M, this Q unit M, they are just a, if, some, some, some information that can be calculated from initial data. And M here is the SMOS mode. It's a mode for, for the XC direction. And these are the uh, spin weighted uh, spheric harmonics. And if you are supported on big or equal to L modes, then you additionally, so you achieve different kinds of decay, which, which is still compatible with the um, price law, in, for instance, in finite radius region and towards now infinity region. And in particular, I need to emphasize that this function again, which is a generalized function of the, uh, the HLR to the L in the scalar wave case, this is a station solution to the, basically the, to the Tokoski equation of the L mode of this uh, spin plus S component, all right. And similarly, you can get results for psi minus S component and for L modes or big O equal to L modes of the spin minus S component. So uh, we actually confirm this uh, for uh, in the Swatcher case, uh, in the, this price law in terms of the initial data. Okay. And in the current case, it's a bit complicated, but still um, uh, we can get something for the field itself, not for the higher modes, because the modes are actually coupled. We assume a bin estimates for a Tokoski mass equation in curve, and then we get this kind of uh, decay. This, this is actually exactly the same as in the Swatcher case, the decay rate and, and also this coefficient, uh, they're totally the same. And however, there is some difference in the remaining coefficients. Uh, so uh, this Q unit M can still be calculated from initial data. And the main difference uh, is actually here, this F function, Fs frac M, this equals to mu S plus AM times this O of R inverse. It's again, a station solution to, to the equation of this uh, special mode of the spin S component, okay. Uh, however, so uh, you, you notice that, so this is not zero anymore. If AM is non-zero generically, so that means if, if, you, if you go to the uh, curve case, generically the extra tau inverse decay is not present. It's just a special case for the S equal to zero case or for uh, AM equal to zero case, okay. So generically, you still get this uh, price law for both spin S components and the decay rates on the event horizon or in finite radius region, they're the same. Okay. Um, and for the application, we can do something for the higher modes, but it's not done in the work. Um, we guess that because of this uh, IA cosine, IAS cosine theta partial tau operator in the Tokoski mass equation, we guess that uh, psi, the L mode of psi S is actually, the leading asymptotics is actually determined by the partial tau derivative acting on the L minus one mode. And hence you get 
uh, this kind of uh, asymptotic decay, which in particular is not the case for the Swatchard. Because in Swatchard case, in the interior region or in the, in the final radius region, you get extra L minus S uh, de decay rate. But this is, I guess this is not the case in the current case anymore. And second, we can consider some nonlinear models. For instance, we can consider this um, nonlinear wave, semi-linear wave equation with power law and uh, with more initial data. And the only difference here is you introduce some nonlinear term, and then there is a better, there is a fight between the linear interaction and nonlinear interaction. You need to investigate which interaction is stronger. And Tohanaalu achieved the sharper upper bound of decay for gamma big or equal to three. And we can hope to uh, get some sharp or lower bound of decay. And the reason uh, is the following. So we do not have global conservation law anymore, but instead we have a almost global conservation law because when we integrate this uh, wave equation in space-time region, we create some lower order term, but, but this is like O of, to the epsilon gamma order. So it's low order in terms of the initial data size. So somehow then we still believe that uh, the sharp decay is basically the same as the uh, scalar wave case if gamma, for instance, bigger or equal to four. Okay, that's what we can hope. And uh, finally, we can also try to uh, consider the strong cosmic censorship. For instance, linear risk gravity on rice nostrum occur. Actually, recently there's a paper by Spiersky considering the um, strong cosmic censorship for linear risk gravity on curve based on the decay rate I have uh, just shown. And you can maybe also consider the strong cosmic censorship about curve, I mean, the nonlinear one. Okay, in the end, I want to thank you all to, uh, to be a present. Let's, uh, let's thank Seal for a beautiful talk. All right, questions. There's a hand, yes, Sergio. You have to unmute yourself, we, we can't hear you. Yeah, so there, there, there are lots of uh, results and uh, they seem very interesting, but it's, it, it's hard to keep track of everything. So uh, in, in terms of uh, this cosmic censorship, yeah. well, first of all, uh, I, I want to understand, so the, the, how to, your results, how do they compare with the ones of uh, Aretakis and Angelopoulos and Gajic? Uh, well, the, the scalar wave case, I think uh, they are, the results, the final results uh, are basically the same. I mean, this is also the same as in the paper of hints, I mean, the final statement. Um, the only difference is, I, I mean, I treat general S. General X, yeah. yeah. I mean, in particular, like linearized gravity, for instance, or yes. Nike's were, yeah. And the other ones were still on care. So the wave equation on care was understood by all these people. Yeah, by Hintz, Angelopoulos, Aritakis, Gadrick, yeah. You do, you do all the, the S uh, wave equations. Yeah. Uh, and it's a, like a unified treatment for all yeah. S. So I just treat S as a parameter and then do the estimate for general S. So in, in terms of having uh, this uh, cosmic censorship result, you, you need to have a lower bound. Yeah, right. this is like a lower bound as well. Oh, I mean, right. here, because all these things are like, uh, sorry, all here, I mean, these are in terms of initial data. So generically, you can see that they're generically non-zero. So I'm, I'm curious because there's going to be a, a, this talk by uh, Jonathan Luke, right? Where he mm -hmm. talks about work with Sung Jing. Yeah. So presumably he's interested in the same thing, no? Mm -hmm. Lower paper? 
So I'm talking about Jonathan Luke and Sung Jin Ho. Oh, he's, he's going to talk uh, later this, uh, this afternoon, right? At one thirty. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So they have a few papers, for instance, for the scalar wave on rise not strong. They have uh, shown this sharp decay, sharp lower bound of decay for scalar wave on rise not strong. Uh, and they have also recently, um, I think, announced a result about, if I understand correctly, some higher modes of the scalar field under this Einstein Maxwell scalar system. Yes. Uh, yeah, and uh, in that case, uh, so the price law violates for higher modes, but not for the for the entire field. So for the higher modes, then they lose, uh, they, they, they have to lose extra tau inverse decay. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Right. And uh, well, so, so I mean, these results are just for modes, right? And you are showing something for modes. Well, okay, here it's not for modes. Uh, this is for the entire field. Okay, I see. So you and for the swatch short case, it's also for well, for the entire feed, and I can also do it for big O equal to L modes, if the solution is supported on big O equal to L modes, because so the mode. So in the end, I mean, th this is maybe the most interesting part of the, your result that you get lower uh, lower bounds for uh, all solutions of this way of these equations in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In swatch short and curve, yeah. But for Kerr, not higher modes, um, yeah. What do you mean, not higher modes? Well, well, I just obtained decay for the field because the modes are not are not decoupled from each other. So it's a bit difficult to achieve the asymptotics for higher modes. But this is what I guess for higher modes anyway. Yeah, but you're in only, case. In, I'm only interested in the lower bound. I mean, all I want is the lower bound. Uh, yeah, lower bound for the field, then this is the result for linear rest gravity, for instance. I see. Okay. Yeah. That's, in, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, there are, too, there are too many results. I think you should have mentioned from the beginning that that's. Well, okay, yes, I, I have a, a slide about that, but I didn't talk very much about that. Uh, maybe it's, yeah, I mean, like, Many many results here, uh, like oh yeah. Also Morgan, Morgan Wunsch, uh, Loy uh, Herberg, they have, they have many many results. Yeah, but you should look at this slide to to get a better understanding of who did who, who whom did what. Yes. No, no, I understand. No, what I was saying is that you, you should have presented the main result as being that one somehow, because otherwise there are too, too many. It's hard to follow. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, Thanks, yeah. Because it's a nice result. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I understand correctly, that's what you say, that you actually get a lower bound for all solutions. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a both an upper and a lower bound, yeah. And for, also, in other words, for the, the sum of the, of the mode. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's for the field itself, not for, yeah. Yeah, not, not solely for modes. Yeah, so that's a very strong design. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. There are other questions. Yes, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, maybe I can add something. Uh, yeah, so uh, you mentioned this nonlinear uh, uh, thing, sort of also compared to Tor and Anu. Um, uh, yeah, so, okay. Yeah, well, okay, also, also, your, also your result. So what about the regime where the, the nonlinear non uh, nonlinearity wins? Uh, sorry, nonlinear what? So, so you say you have a fight between the linear and nonlinear. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so once, <coughs> okay. So once, for instance, for this model, if gamma big or equal to four, then this linear, linear uh, interaction actually dominates. Then you actually get basically the same decay and the coefficient as the linear case. But when three less than gamma, le strictly less than four, then the nonlinear interaction actually dominates. And then you, you can only get some kind of sharp upper bound, not you can you can derive some asymptotics, but the coefficient will really depend on the nonlinear evolution. 
So you can, so one can, you can also do that. You say. So let's say government. Well, well, okay, you can only achieve. I can only achieve sharp upper bound. I cannot do I anything okay, okay, okay. for lower bound for this model. Big, uh, yeah, it's um, it's unclear for me. I see. Okay. 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 Thanks. Yeah. All right, well, let's, let's thank Sion again for a beautiful talk.